Hi there, thanks for dropping in. Today I'm going to show you how I turned this birch bowl. It's from a birch burl and it's just full of bug holes and bug trails and I really, really like that effect. Now, one thing about it, it is a sixteenth of an inch thick on this side and three sixteenths of an inch thick on this side. Can you figure out how I did that? Do you think I did it on purpose? Well, I hope you'll stick around and see just what I did. So let's do some work and see what we can do about this bowl. I have another piece of birch here, another gift from Don Gillis, so thank you, Don. This one's got a burrow right here. And I would like to make that the bottom of the bowl that I'm gonna get out of this, because if I try to make it the top and turn this away, I'll probably lose all the figure that I'm hoping is going to be in there. Now it's not cut square to this, and I would like to cut this so that it's at 90 degrees from this. So I need to cut approximately across here. Another problem is that this is 17 inches high this way and 18 inches across this way and my lathe is only good for 16 inches, so it's too large to start with. Also, if I'm going to cut across here, my bandsaw will only accommodate 12 inches, so I do need to make this smaller for that purpose anyway. So I want to come down roughly two and a half inches in this direction, two and a half inches up from the bottom, cut across here, and I'm going to cut across here, try to even this up, then I'll be able to put it on the bandsaw and cut this. This could be interesting. So I'll take care of all of that and I'll be back. All right, I have this cut now. It may be slightly larger than 16 inches diagonally. If it is, I'll take the bandsaw and cut off just a little bit. Now in the back, I had drilled a hole for a woodworm screw, but I decided because of the weight and the unevenness that this is going to have, I'd put a six inch face plate on here. So now let's take it over to the lathe and see what happens with it. All right, I've got it so it will spin on here. It is definitely out of balance. This is only 250 RPM. Maybe you can see how much it's shaking. And I'm pleased because the center is only about three quarters of an inch from where I wanted it to be. I think that's pretty darn good considering the size of this piece and trying to get it centered. Now, before I start turning it, there's a lot of bark on here that I know is not going to survive the ride. So I'm gonna tear a bunch off and then I'll be back to start the turning. All right, I've got pretty much all of the bark taken off and it's revealed an amazing network of bug trails and bug holes. I'd be pleased if some of those could be kept, but you never know until we start turning. Now, the first thing I want to do is just turn a bit of a flat spot here. I'm hoping to be able to get a large enough flat area to do a recess to put a chuck in there in expansion mode. But I might have to take too much of this away to make that worthwhile. So I'll get a bit of a flat spot just to help start to balance this out. And then I'll start turning away around here. So I'll get my smock on, my face shield, and I'll be right back. All right, 
I've tried turning the speed up just for the heck of it, and actually it levels out at 500 RPM. So it's going to be quite a change, I hope. Rather than carry on trying to turn this part away, which gives a really rough ride, I'm going to start making that flat area now. Seven hundred fifty RPM running pretty smoothly. Got some real nice bug holes still hanging in there. I hope they'll survive the ride. I still need to take some more off of here to have a large enough space for a recess. Well, I might be able to put a recess in there. So I'll just measure it out, lay out the line for it, and then give that a try. I want a two inch recess. So I've set my compass to one inch. And I'll just run this around here. That's where I have to make that recess. I'll use my parting tool. Not sure if I'm gonna have a problem because of this knot area here. We'll see what we can come up with. That's a pretty rough ride with that knot in there. But I don't really want to keep turning it down. I might go halfway through this bowl before I get rid of that knot, for all I know. Just try very gently using that recess scraper. See if I can clean that up a little bit. should do it and I do hope this wood is strong enough around here now we get back to turning the outside I have this at 900 rpm now and it still seems to be running fairly smoothly turning much better now. I would like to leave some of this in here if I can. So time to start to shape the upper part here. I'm really liking this. Starting to like the shape a lot better too.
I want to do some shear scraping. And because I've got so much air time to take care of here, I'm going to be turning this at 2000 RPM. For anyone who hasn't watched my videos, let me explain again. If I bring my handle up so that this edge is almost parallel with the beds, that's shear scraping. When I drop the handle and bring that edge up more vertical, that becomes shear cutting. And that's what I'm trying to do here is shear cut this. I'm going to sand this piece now. I'll turn it in reverse so the dust is heading toward the dust collector. And I'm using a two inch sanding disc on my drill, starting with 80 grit. I'll be turning this faster than I normally would because I want to avoid getting down into this area in here. So I'll be turning 1000 RPM, air shield on, dust collector running, so I will mute the sound Enjoy the music instead. Well, the sanding is not an exciting part. It's a necessary part of the procedure, but something you don't really want to watch. So I'll continue doing the sanding off camera and I'll bring you back when I'm finished. I have it sanded to 400, which was quite a job with all the air time that I had to do here. So some was by hand. I managed to use pyrography to get my signature on there, species of wood and the year. And this was real interesting because there was so much dust packed in these small bug holes and trails that I actually took it outside dragged the compressor hose out and blew all the dust out. And I have to tell you, doing that in February in Alberta was a lot of fun. <laughs> all right, now it's time to reverse chuck this and start on the inside. I have it reversed now into my chuck jaws. I'm going to bring up my tail center with the cone in it for a little little support just to make sure that I'm not going to have this thing flying across the shop when I first start cutting. So I'll get this ready to cut and I'll be right back. I'll start by trimming off the front a little bit, get rid of this jagged edge. 1000 RPM, 3 8 inch bowl gouge. Obviously, it's just a little bit off center because it's much thinner here than it is over there. But I'm going to leave it like that. Not that I can put the wood back on here anyway. <laughs> I've pulled the tail stock back now. I sure hope I don't need that support.
All right, I'd like to keep some of these bug holes intact and actually make this thin enough for them to come through to see how well this is going to work. Now I can only get so thin because I'm real thin right up here already. So some of these bug holes may not come all the way through because it's much thicker. But I'm pretty much committed to staying there. I don't trust myself to turn thinner than that. Right here measures 1 16th of an inch. I don't think I want to try getting any thinner than that. And I'm real glad this is dry wood. If it was wet wood, it would already be warping. What I'm trying to do is turn down just a small amount and then take the mass out here. If I take all the mass out, it's not supporting the outside here and it might start to really, really wobble. And I don't need any vibration to help, that's for sure. Getting to be a bit of a reach into there. Try bringing this out here. All right, I think I'm in there far enough now that I want to sand this. Once I get in too far, there's a good chance it's going to vibrate. So I'll sand this, and then I'll be back. I have this sanded to 400 now. I started with 150, and that is feeling real nice. Now, <laughs> I want to keep turning from here and hopefully not get any thinner than this, because I'll blow right out the side if I do. Well, let me get everything back in position and I'll start turning this. All right, I think I need to come up with another light source. Just a little dim in there. That's a little brighter. Now well, let's carry on. Something that's going to make this take a long time is that I have to keep checking that I'm not getting too thin. I have these double-ended calipers that I got from Lee Valley Tools. When you clamp down with one end, you have the same gap on the other end. So I can tell that it starts to get wider right there. And I've made a mark with a pencil at that point, so I know that I have to take that away and thin from there.
All right, sand it to 400 all the way through there now. Pretty darn even thickness, so I'm happy with that. Now let's see if I can do a little more without blowing this sucker up. I'm a little concerned with when I get down to where I was turning so much air, just how open this is going to be. It might end up with a fairly thick bottom. Getting to the point where I'm leaning too far over the tool rest with this 3 8 inch bowl gouge. And when I hit this hard knot, it's making it jump a lot. So I'm going to switch up to my half inch bowl gouge and see if that will do a better job in there. It's definitely not jumping as much. Very chippy right in there. And I don't dare use it up in here. It's very grabby, this gouge. So if I get a grab and it kicks back, it'll go right through the side of this. So I'll come back now with the 3 8 do a little more turning. I've switched to my four inch tool rest so I can get in there a little bit closer with it. Normally, when turning something this thin, you would want to put one hand on the outside gently, just to give a little bit of support in case it wants to flex. But with all these bug holes and things out here, I don't think my hand would have a very good time. So I've got to carry on without doing that and just hope I can do gentle enough cuts. Pretty good right to there, so I guess I'll sand this area now, and I'll be back. Well, I'm real happy with this so far. Time to sand again. Because this knot goes all the way through and is so hard to cut, I'm gonna try raising the speed. So let's see what it does at 1500 RPM. I really don't want this thing to blow apart on me. It's running fine at 1500, but I can sure see that it's flexing on the outside here. Oh, I can really feel it there. Now I'm hoping that 1500 RPM will give me a cleaner cut here. If it doesn't do that, it might blow apart.
Well, I'm definitely down into the area that is so hollowed on the outside. Yep, starting to see all the way through in a lot of spots here. I'm as deep as I dare go. It's getting pretty close to where I'm gonna come right through onto that recess. So that's the maximum depth. Now I need to clean this up just a little bit. And how often have you heard of somebody saying, I just need one cleanup cut and everything fell apart. I hope this isn't gonna be one of those days. All right, I'm just gonna sand this now, and I'll be back. Well, I am real pleased with this. You can probably see there are a lot of bug holes that are just packed with sawdust. I'm gonna take this outside again, blow all the dust out of it that I can, and then I think I'm just gonna finish this with Howard Feed and Wax. Certainly not gonna be a friction polish. I'll be back to show you the results. Well, I'm happy with this. It's a beautiful piece of wood. I just love all these bug holes and bug trails that are all through it. Now, if anybody asks you, I did this as an off-axis turning on purpose. That's how I managed to get it to 1 16th of an inch thick on this side and 3 16 over here. We won't tell them that I didn't have it in the chuck quite seated properly, okay? That's just between you and me. So I finished this with Howard Feed and Wax. I just love the warm glow that it gives to this birch. But if I'd been thinking, I would not have used Howard Feed and Wax. I would have just coated this with mineral oil because mineral oil will run into all those little crevices all by itself, no assistance necessary. With this, sort of a gel so I had to use this little micro brush to get it in there and I got to tell you that was not as much fun as you might think so anyway I'm happy with it as I said and I hope you enjoyed this video maybe you'll be able to someday find a piece like this and turn it this way I really enjoyed turning this so thank you for joining me today I appreciate you taking your time to come to my shop and I hope you'll come back next time between now and then, have a great day in your shop and be safe. If you like this, feel free to share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like it, click the like button. Let me know I'm doing something right. Till next time, you take care. Bye-bye now.